a brutally honest review of The Ordinary's new niacinamide power from a medical esthetician. Hi! I'm a huge fan of The Ordinary, and they recently launched this 100% pure niacinamide powder, but they already create one of my cult favorite products, which is their niacinamide 10% and zinc 1%. So if this product works so well, is this niacinamide powder doing anything extra for us? I not only decided to dig into the science and to try this out, but also speak to some of the chemists at The Ordinary to figure out what's going on, because my first thoughts upon hearing the launch of this product is that more is not always better. Specifically, with what the science says about niacinamide, dermal absorption peaks between 10 and 20 percent. So if our skin can't really use this much niacinamide, are we just handing people an ingredient for them to play around chemist in their kitchen that's going to destroy their skin? So first off, what is niacinamide? Niacinamide is a form of vitamin B3, and it can have a lot of beneficial effects, both as a dietary supplement and when applied topically to the skin. You see, vitamin B3 is water-soluble, meaning that it dissolves in water. That also means that we pee it out, so if we eat too much of it, it's not going to be super harmful. Whereas fat-soluble vitamins actually get stuck in our body and can become toxic if we eat too much of them. But we're not eating this, so what about putting it on our skin? Rosacea, eczema, acne, all of these conditions can be helped by niacinamide. And niacinamide is also safe if you're pregnant, breastfeeding, or nursing, which is really good because some skincare ingredients like retinol are not. Niacinamide also has some power for pigmentation, so whether it's after a pimple, maybe your skin gets a little bit red, or purple, this could potentially help. Or if you're someone who struggles with very mild melasma or even freckles or this skin pigmentation, this might be able to do some good. But how exactly does it help these conditions? And then again, the big question, does having 100% of it to play chemist in our kitchen, is that actually a good idea? Niacinamide can be slightly anti-inflammatory and it can help with oil regulation. So if you do have acne prone skin and if you do have a bunch of oil, which is my personal case, I found that niacinamide is super helpful. Niacinamide and zinc. This zinc PCA 1% is even better for oil control. That's why I love this product for my oily acne prone skin so much. But this combination of niacinamide and zinc PCA can break some people out. So the fact that this doesn't have that zinc PCA might be better for drier or more combination skin types. Niacinamide has also been shown to stop the transfer of pigment from some cells to others. Meaning that again, if you have those little acne marks that are left over, if you do have pigmentation problems, this could help. You see, we have different skin cells inside of our faces and inside of our body. Some of those are melanocytes, which produce a pigment, a color of our skin called melanin. This melanin is given to our other skin cells. They're called keratinocytes. And this pigment kind of acts like an umbrella. Just the way an umbrella protects you from the rain, this melanin pigment protects your keratinocyte skin cells from the sun. So it's like a little tan sun umbrella. However, for some people, their skin doesn't regulate this properly, meaning they get dark patches. These could be freckles or melasma, or this could be little scars or little marks left over from acne. Niacinamide does not decrease the amount of pigment that your melanocytes create, but it basically says, whoa, stop, don't share. So even though this pigment is still being produced, it's not being spread and given to those other skin cells, meaning that there's less pigment that shows up on your face. Niacinamide is also super helpful with redness, and as someone who has acne, I get this all the time. Especially if you have rosacea, this can help a lot. You see, rosacea-prone skin is very irritated skin, and there aren't a lot of products that work for it. And niacinamide is great because, again, it helps with that inflammation and actually increases the amount of ceramides you have in your skin. Ceramides are super helpful compounds that help our skin basically retain its barrier. And the more of them we have, the healthier our skin is going to be. And so if our skin is producing them naturally, if niacinamide helps them be more effective or create more of them, that's overall better for our skin's function. Now, there are many helpful products with niacinamide on the market. Again, we have this one at 10%, and there are a bunch of others that I love. You find them in moisturizers and serums and sunscreens and even in some cleansers, which doesn't totally make sense because niacinamide is something that should be sitting and staying on the skin, but you know, cosmetic industry, you do you. <laughs> even Paula's Choice did a 20% niacinamide, but it actually got backlash because it left some white pastiness on the face. And also, more doesn't necessarily mean better. You see, when we look at medical studies, we want to look at how ingredients work, but also how much the skin can actually use. And it appears that dermal absorption is good at even 5 percent, meaning a 5 percent niacinamide product is going to work perfectly fine. You could go up to 10 percent, but even past 10 percent and especially past 15 percent or 20 percent, you're not going to get the same amount of dermal absorption. So is more really better? And again, if people go gung-ho with this, are they going to be ruining their faces? When you look at the way this is externally packaged, the component is exactly the same as the 100 percent L-ascorbic acid powder, which 
which I've reviewed and done a full in-depth dive on right here. This comes with the exact same little scooper, which is kind of frustrating because it's a mess. You don't actually need a full scoop, and if you're using a full scoop, you're probably using too much. And again, just like the L ascorbic acid powder, this is water soluble, so it's going to work best in water-based formulas. But before we talk about my experience with the product, I wanted to share some of the questions that I got to ask the chemists and literally say, why are you guys doing this? It is kind of a first, and I think that my brain is still trying to get used to it, but I'm trying to understand why. So the first question I asked the chemists was, why? <laughs> and they did say that they were inspired by the niacinamide serum. They saw that people loved it so much and that niacinamide is very popular. Again, it is a very, very stable substance. So they thought if people want to add it to other things like peptide moisturizers, does that make sense? Once they kind of told me this, I thought about it and I do agree. There are skincare products that don't have niacinamide that could use a little bit of a boost. And the good thing about niacinamide, we talked about how it's very stable. So it can mix with many other things. It can go well with many other actives. And again, it's probably not going to ruin your face. Outside of what the chemists told me, I decided to look into some of the science of it, and it looks like even people who use niacinamide on a regular basis don't see a lot of irritation. The biggest thing is that there might be a little bit of flushing or a little bit of stinging, and of course the biggest thing is really that white flashback. If you use too much of this, it actually leaves like a pasty, um, chalky streak on the skin. However, using too much niacinamide should not be detrimental to the skin. Again, it's water soluble, it is a vitamin. I would argue that this is even safer than the 100% L-ascorbic acid. But again, it gets into this idea of we're letting people play chemist in their kitchen. Is that really a good idea? And my answer for this is that for a beginner, no. But again, look at the ordinary. The ordinary is not formulated to be a beginner line. With names like niacinamide and zinc or resveratrol and ferulic acid, this is not a beginner line. The ordinary has specifically targeted people who are skin intelligent, skin intelligent, or skincare science nerds or who are willing to learn. So the people who are picking up this product, even if they are brand new, they're probably interested in understanding some of these finalities and they're okay with taking some of this responsibility into their own hands. Because because again, with great power comes great responsibility, and that's something that this entire line gave to us. If a brand like Neutrogena or CeraVe did this, it would be horrible, because their at-home, non-professional consumer base would not know how to use them. If a brand like Drunk Elephant or Tatcha did this, again, it would be horrible. But because of how The Ordinary has positioned themselves, I do think it makes sense. The second question was, how long did this take to formulate? And after I sent the question, I realized what a dumb question that is. You see, most products need to be formulated, stability tested, and dermally tested to see how they work and how they hold up. This is just one ingredient. It's 100% niacinamide, so you don't need to formulate it at all. You just package it and put it in the bottle and sell it. That being said, they said that from start to finish, from concept to launch, it only took six months, which again, for any regular skincare product, is a red flag. If something gets done in six months, they are either an expert who is doing this for years and can do things quickly, or they are lying and ripping you off. Because it takes time to create, formulate, stability test, safety test, and produce and deliver these things. But for a one ingredient product, I guess I can kind of see that working. For instance, when you normally formulate products, you have to go through multiple renditions because something won't work out right. Chemistry is complex, and if you measured things improperly or if they didn't combine or separate correctly in the different phases, you can get a messed up product. Most companies have to reiterate and reformulate three times, and that could be up to 10 to 15, which is why some companies do charge so much for the expertise and the information that goes into their products. However, for this one, it sounds like it was pretty easy because, again, it's just one product. The biggest problem that they had was due to COVID-19. A lot of the other Ordinaries products are sold out and they're hard to restock because a lot of their supply chains are disrupted by things being shut down. So I guess that was an issue, but that's also about it. I also specifically asked these chemists the hard questions and I said, dermal absorption peaks at around 10%. Even though there's not irritation, why would you do this? They responded to me by saying, more is not better. And I really like that they admitted that. And here's exactly what they told me. Scientific literature does specify that the minimum efficacious concentration of topically or on skin, applied niacinamide is 2.5%. They have data that demonstrates a lack of skin irritations at concentrations greater than 10%. 
same. Nevertheless, it's important to note that the concept of more is better cannot be achieved, and is not the aim. In this instance, with the use of the Ordinary's 100% niacinamide powder, as it becomes increasingly more difficult to dissolve the powder in any chosen base concentration greater than 20%. In addition to that, mixtures with concentrations of 20% and higher have a great potential to impart undesired white residue on the skin. I fully agree, and I guess the answer around that is that they wanted this to be convenient. They wanted this to be something you could add into your skincare routine already, if you don't want to buy these new serums or if you have a favorite moisturizer that you just want to add niacinamide into. And again, because it's not harmful, I understand that. I also asked about what products should not be mixed. You see, niacinamide and vitamin C together have gotten a bad rap from people who don't do their research. Science has shown that niacinamide and vitamin C do not react negatively together unless they are under very specific temperature and pressure conditions. However, just to be safe, The Ordinary says do not mix this with other vitamin C products and specifically do not mix it with their 100% L-ascorbic acid powder. And you know that the first moment I saw this, that that was my intention, I was like, wait, I want to mix this. I wouldn't put it on my face, but I'm kind of interested to mix these and see what happens. Should we do it? Let me know. I asked what this chemist's three favorite combinations are, and they responded with The Ordinary's Natural Moisturizing Factors, as well as The Buffet, and The Hyaluronic Acid 2.5% plus B5. Remember that B5 is panthenol, it's another B vitamin, so it's water soluble, so adding some B3 is a good idea. I also love the NMF, that is again a formula that would work very well with this, and The Buffet is notorious um, with its peptides for not playing well with other ingredients, but again, because niacinamide is so stable, this can be mixed into peptide formulas very, very well. So when it comes to some of the usage, niacinamide can be used day and night. And again, because it's very stable, it's really not that harmful if you use too much. Again, you should try not to, but it's not detrimental. And even if you mix it with the wrong thing, you really can't go that wrong. Also, people don't seem to have allergies or reactions to this, which is good. Again, there's always going to be someone who has a strange allergy or a strange reaction, but for most of the population, this shouldn't be a problem. What are my personal thoughts? Well, first off, the scooper sucks. I wish they would give you the right size, because if you used a full scooper, you are just going to end up with a chalk face, and we don't want that. The same issue that I had with the L-ascorbic acid powder is that because it is such a fine powder, it is very messy. This is not something quick. <laughs> this is something that takes time, and again, the benefit is that you can have it fresh mixed, but in order to do that each time, it takes a lot of effort. It's just not an easy, user-friendly experience. So I would recommend doing these mix-ins once a week or once a month, and then kind of using them and applying them to skin. It's not horrible, but I do wish that some of those things were a bit easier. I personally love using these before retinoids as well as mixing this in with a moisturizer. If you'd like a video on my favorite combinations with this or how I actually use this, I'm more than happy to share. But just know that before retinoids, niacinamide can be very helpful. And again, this is because of its anti-inflammatory properties, how it increases ceramide production in the skin, and the way that retinoids work to mediate your oil control or how they increase the cellular turnover of your skin. So what are my overall thoughts? Um, it's new, and I have to do some getting used to it. I was much more open to the L-ascorbic acid powder, and I wonder if this just hasn't grown on me yet. I've only had it for about a week, and I think I need to play around with it more, maybe more textures, and see how it feels. Um, overall, for the price point, I do think it's worth it. But also, please don't expect a facelift in a bottle, or a chemical peel in a bottle, because that is definitely not what this is. Some people can argue that this is too powerful, but again, this is actually a very tame ingredient. This is even safer than the vitamin and see L-ascorbic acid, and some people will say, well, you're playing cosmetic chemist in your kitchen, that's not safe. Again, The Ordinary, their entire line is kind of doing that, and I think that that user, which is me and you and people who are interested in cosmetic chemistry and skin science, we need to be served, and a lot of other brands aren't doing that on the market, so I really don't mind it that much. This line is built for skincare nerds and not for the novice. This product makes that obvious. When it comes to how to use this, let me know if you'd like that video, and please make sure that that like button matches my shirt. Subscribe so that you don't miss more skin science and cosmetic chemistry, and if you want a full playlist on The Ordinary talking about this serum as well as others, we've done some major deep dives and nerded out on the skin science right here. Overall, remember to be beautiful both inside and out, and I cannot wait to see you in the next video. <laughs> Love you guys! Bye.